Rescue knots are the key link in all rescue systems. Rescue personnel must continually practice and develop their knot tying skills. In this section, we are going to demonstrate how to tie rescue knots. The first knot we're going to tie today is figure eight on a bite. Figure eight on a bite is tied at the end of a rope. You take the bend of the end of your rope, form a loop, come around the rope, pull it through the loop that you formed, and pull tight, remembering that a figure eight looks exactly like the number eight. Let me tie it again. Take the bend of the rope, loop the rope, over the rope, and through the loop that you formed, creating a beautiful figure eight. Figure eight follow through. Figure eight follow through is used in situations where figure eight on a bite cannot be used. First thing is we tie a simple figure eight knot at the end of the rope. Take it, wrap it around, pull it through, creating a figure eight. We take this and we place it around or through the object that we're going to tie through. We follow the existing figure eight knot with the other end of the rope. Pull it through, making sure we have enough rope to complete the full knot. Wrap it around, through, around, and back through, completing the figure eight knot. Again, the figure eight follow through. After we tie the simple figure eight knot in a rope, we place it around or through the object we are going to attach to. We follow the existing figure eight knot, pulling the opposite end of the rope through the knot, leaving enough slack to form the knot completely. Figure eight follow through. The figure eight bend is used when tying two knots together. It's important to remember not to confuse the figure eight bend with the figure eight follow through. Although the knots are tied similarly, they cannot be used in the same situations. We take a rope and tie the simple figure eight as a foundation. We take a second rope and we follow that simple figure eight exactly. Wrapping around and following it through in the exact path used in the simple figure eight. Again, the figure eight bend. With our simple figure eight as a foundation, we take our second rope and we follow the simple figure eight exactly. Pulling it through, leaving enough slack to complete the knot, following the path of the existing simple figure eight, around, through, around, and through. Our two ropes are now tied together. Double overhand bend. Double overhand bend is used when tying two equal diameter ropes together. It can be used when tying two separate ropes together. But today, we're going to demonstrate using one rope and making a prussic loop. You take one end of the rope and you tie an overhand bend over the top of it. You do that by placing the rope around and looping it around itself twice and then pulling it through.
creating one overhand bend. You take the opposite end of the rope and tie it the opposite way that you tied that knot, doing an overhand bend in the reverse direction. By doing that, the two knots fit together exactly, forming the double overhand bend. Three wrap prussic hitch. A three wrap prussic hitch is used to attach the prussic loop to our main line. You take your prussic loop with the knot in, in your hand and wrap it around the main line three times. Two, three. As we're pulling the slack out of the prussic loop, do so with only one side of the rope. This takes the double overhand bend knot and takes it to one side so that when you place a carabiner or attach to the prussic loop, you are not attaching to the knot itself. Remember, as in all knots, it's very important to dress this knot cleanly. Three wrap prussic loop. Clove hitch. Clove hitch is used to tie the working end of a rope around an object. Take your rope, you wrap it around your object, wrap it over itself, around the object again, and through the loop you created, making an X. And that's it. One more time. You take your working end of the rope, you wrap it around an object, you wrap it over itself, around the object again, and through creating an X. Overhand bend, also known as the water knot, is used for tying two pieces of webbing together or forming a loop out of a piece of webbing. You take your webbing, you wrap it around itself and through the loop, dressing it neatly, spin the knot around, you take the opposite end of the webbing and follow the exact path of the first knot. Pulling it through, remembering to pull enough through to complete the knot, follow the exact path of the existing knot, pulling it through again, creating the overhand bend. In this knot, you always need a backup. You take your end and you wrap it around itself, forming an overhand bend on one side of the knot. and forming an overhand bend on the other side of the knot. Creating the overhand bend. The square knot. The square knot is used to tie two pieces of webbing together. We use it to secure the ends when tying the seat harness. You take your two pieces of webbing, you wrap one end around itself, lay it over the top, so that it forms a loop. You take the other end and wrap it around itself, pulling the end through the opposite loop, creating the square knot. The muter hitch. The muter hitch is used when you do not have a belay device. We use it in our radium release hitch. You take your rope, you take your carabiner, you put the rope through the carabiner, 
wrap it around the rope and then back through the carabiner creating the Munter hitch. Remember that the load or the climber is on this side of the Munter hitch. The belayer is on this end. Radium release hitch. The radium release hitch is used as a releasing hitch in a raising system. First you need 33 feet of cordelette. Take your 8 millimeter cord and tie a figure 8 on a bite into the rope. The figure 8 on a bite is attached to the locking carabiner on the load side of the hitch which we use the silver carabiner for. You take the opposite end of the rope and place it in the anchor side which is the black carabiner. You take your cordelette and again place it through the load side carabiner or the silver carabiner. On the black side we are now going to tie the Munter hitch. So we place our cordelette through the carabiner, wrap it around itself, pulling the excess cordelette through, and again through the locking carabiner creating the Munter hitch. Now that the releasing part of the radium release hitch is completed, we need to secure the knot. This is done by taking the loop of cordelette and tying three half hitches around the main line. One, two, three, leaving a loop. Finally, to safety this knot, we need to get the end of the radium release hitch cordelette and tie another figure eight on a bite. We take our last carabiner, which is red, place it in the figure eight on a bite, place it through the loop, and finally place it into our black carabiner or the anchor side. We secure all the locking carabiners and we have completed our radium release hitch.